Hey YouTube, welcome back to my channel. So I wanted to film a quick video today about something that's been on my mind and something that's probably relevant to you or someone you know, although it is a little bit controversial. So before I get into the details, I wanted to mention that I am doing one-on-one -on -one supportive coaching. I offer a free 15-minute consultation, a 30-minute call, and a 60-minute call. And I am offering my coaching at lower rates than other places you might find online. I will put the direct link to my online booking calendar in the description of this video. I also will put the link to my website if you're interested in reading more about my story. You can also book coaching sessions through there. And I will leave my email address in the description if you have just a single question to ask me. So on to the video. This one is about the complications or even just the topic of tapering. So I just want to put a little disclaimer at the beginning of this video. This is controversial. This is my own personal opinions based on all of the years I've been in this space, my own experience, plus the experiences of others that I talk to in coaching. So forgive me if I don't quite sound right. I did recently have COVID. Um, my daughter and I both have COVID. I'm just at the tail end of it. She is still recovering. So I don't look 100% like myself. I was very ill, although it didn't affect my withdrawal symptoms at all. So that's a really positive thing. Um, I know sickness, illness, um, viruses, colds, flus can really ramp up and rev up people's symptoms who are in this state, but eventually you get to a point where these things don't affect you in the same way anymore. So that's a positive. Um, back to tapering. So in this community, there are different kind of belief systems. Obviously, withdrawal states and adverse reactions is not something that is scientifically studied much. Um, most of what we know about these conditions are anecdotal, um, gathering people's stories, watching for patterns. It's much easier for me as a coach now to see patterns that happen with different people since I coach people back to back, people who have taken all different sorts of drugs, um, mostly psychiatric, but some other types of drugs as well that have a similar mechanism of action. Um, I won't get into the details of that in this video, but there's this sort of, um, I guess, mindset in these communities that tapering is black and white. Tapering is sort of this thing where if you follow the guidelines, you will be fine. And again, I'm not trying to scare anyone. I'm not trying to um, give medical advice. This is just my personal opinion based on what I know and what I've seen. But tapering is not black and white. Um, you know, I talk to people all the time that will say this forum or, you know, the basically what the forums recommend is this. So I'm going to stick to this. And that might mean three years of tapering, five years of tapering, eight years of tapering. But... Again, from what I've seen, people who have only taken one class of drug pretty much stayed at the same dosage all the years or however long they've been on the drug, did quote unquote well on the drug and now are looking to come off but feel okay, feel functional, they tend to do the best with a 5 to 10% taper every two to four weeks. That's kind of the general guidelines, whether you're looking at Ashton Manual, whether you're looking at, you know, the forums, the general recommendations in this community. But I've seen it happening a lot lately where, you know, there's people who have a long and complicated drug history. They've taken several different classes of drugs. Um, you know, they've stopped and started several different times in their journey, you know, tried to taper. It wasn't working, so they had to reinstate or they've had to opdose or add meds. I mean, there's all these different scenarios. And like I said, when people have a fairly straightforward taper, a straightforward drug history, they tend to do the best with the 5 to 10% every two to four weeks. Now, when you look at another class of people, like I said, who have had much more complicated drug histories and or they've had severe adverse reactions, whether it's on reinstatement, on updosing, on trying a new drug, on, you know, some people will have been on antidepressants years ago, came off completely fine, and then years later they went through postpartum depression or whatever it might be, try to go back on that same drug or the same class of drug, and they have this, like, 
what they describe as like an explosion of the nervous system. That was what happened to me on my reinstatement and then subsequent polypharmacy, polydrugging, um, people who have akathisia, people who, again, have a complicated drug history. It's not always so black and white as 5 to 10% every two to four weeks. There's also this notion of, you know, if someone has been trying to taper or maybe they've been trying to hold and they're just not stable, they don't feel functional, they're not functional, they're having severe symptoms, there's this notion of updose to try to get to, you know, a more stable place and then hold until you feel better. And again, it sounds black and white. Theoretically, it sounds like something that, you know, makes sense, it's logical, but it doesn't work for a lot of people. Um, benzos are especially bad for this, where I've seen, I mean, my own situation is when I tried to reinstate my SSRI and I got akathisia, movement disorder, severe symptoms, um, I ended up taking Ativan uh, because I hadn't slept for five days and it worked like a charm. And my gut instinct was don't take this longer than a week. You know, I know how addictive benzos are. I know the dangers of benzos, but I was getting this advice online of, well, if it's helping your symptoms, stay on it, get as stable as possible, and then do a micro taper. Well, against all of my intuition and gut instinct, I tried to do that, but then the benzo went paradoxical. So then I was stuck um, with these severe symptoms that were brought on, like an, within an hour of taking a dose, I was spacing my, like I went from taking Ativan once a day to twice to three to four times because I was getting inner dose withdrawals. I was getting paradoxical reactions within an hour of taking the drug after several weeks of trying to, you know, this stabilization thing against, again, my better intuition. Um, and then I was in a real bind because I had made it down 40% of my dose. And I mean, the paradoxical reactions were so bad. The inner dose withdrawals were so bad. I was like, it, it was becoming a toxic drug in my system and I had to be taken off quickly. And I see this all the time with people when I'm coaching. Um, you know, a prime example is if someone has been trying to micro taper, it's just not going well, and then they end up doing a much quicker taper under a skilled physician and doing it blindly or not blindly, and they're able to come off the drug quicker and they actually start to feel better. That's just one scenario. There's other scenarios where people are taking multiple different drugs, they're trying to taper one, it's just not going well, they're not stable, and then, you know, all of a sudden they just are like, I'm sick of this one drug and they stop it and they start to feel better. Obviously, like, I'm not saying you should ever cold turkey. I'm not saying you should, I'm not telling people to rapid taper. That's not what I'm saying. But there becomes this point and I don't like putting labels on things. I've talked about that in other videos. I think we like to kind of compartmentalize things when we're talking about symptoms, when we're talking about um, diagnoses, labels. We just like to kind of attach things in our minds but just like a lot of the symptoms of these different or a lot of symptoms of withdrawal and adverse reactions overlap I also think um <clears throat> that like these the labels overlap so I'm not going to get into saying you know I'm not going to be using words like neurotoxicity toxic encephalopathy um, all of those things, like there's lots of different labels like that, that are again, kind of talked about in some parts of this community. And I'm not saying that that's what's going on with people, but I do believe that with some people, I have my own theory about what order of drugs people or what order people take drugs in and when it's more likely to happen, but you, the people are having direct drug effects and, you know, they're, they're associating it with doing a micro taper or trying to hold and become stable. It's not happening. They can't figure out why. And they're looking thing at things through that lens of black and white withdrawal, you know, tapering is everything is straightforward and it's not. Some people do are having at some point direct drug effects, whatever you want to call it, and coming off the drug quicker is actually in their best interest. Now, of course, you don't want to do this on your own. Ideally, you want to have a skilled physician. I know that that can be very difficult for a lot of people to find. That's why there are more doctors in this community, you know, a few that I can think of off the top of my head that are spreading awareness about this and that I've had conversations with about this. And 
it happens where, you know, people are having direct drug reactions and they do need to come off quicker instead of tapering for three, five, six, eight, ten years or whatever type of plan they're going on. Um, obviously, like even Ashton Manual, I believe, um, it's been a while since I read it, talks about tapering should be patient led and I agree with that um, but I also realize that people develop cognitive issues from these drugs they have a very hard time being objective they have a hard time you know they get very confused very stressed out so I understand that and I'm trying to you know be sensitive to that as I talk about this um, so you know that's why I talk about having someone help you do this and try to figure out what's going on because you know, the, again, the notion of trying to be become stable on these drugs, specifically benzos, is a great idea in theory, but in reality, you know, isn't always the case for people. I could not get stable on benzos, and I'm very glad that I actually was able to come off quicker rather than doing a two to three year taper, like the forums were telling me when I was not only completely unstable and non-functional, but I was having direct drug effects. Now there's like, there's debate about what a direct drug effect looks like. Um, obviously, like I think in, in my case, I within an hour of taking every dose of Ativan, my movements, my shaking, my tremors, my outward symptoms were really bad. They were ramping up. Um, and so it seems like, okay, you take something, it was essentially like poison to my system and I needed to come off it, which is very strange because, you know, just a month prior to that, taking the benzo actually helped my symptoms. So again, I have, I have a complicated drug history. I took eight different drugs. I was on and off. So you have to remember that you have to factor that in. But I think like the reason I want to talk about this is people get so down on this themselves because they're like why can't I make a micro taper why can't I make one little cut without severe symptoms you know and even just the psychology of I have to taper for three to five years is it becomes unbearable for people and again I'm not telling people to rapid taper I'm not telling people to cold turkey I'm not giving medical advice I'm just saying that it can get to that point where you are having direct drug effects and it's complicated and I get that there's not any direct you know measurements or things that you can it's not like you can take a blood test and be like yeah well the drug is paradoxical for sure you need to come off um and i guess like i i just wanted to validate you know people who might be feeling that way or might be suspecting that that's going on with them it could be the case i just i get very frustrated when i hear no you have to taper two to four you know five to ten percent every two to four weeks in every single situation yes that's the safest yes that's the best you know route if you're if, you, if your situation is not complicated but you have to factor in like there are situations again where people are having direct drug effects um i see it a lot um i'm not even going to say again, which ordering of drugs I tend to see that the most with. Um, but I do see it consistently with certain ordering of drugs, um, if that makes any sense. But let me know in the comments what your tapering situation is like. Are you currently tapering? Are you waiting to try to stabilize to taper? Are you post taper? And what was your taper like? Um, you know, and I, and I do need to acknowledge that, you know, there are people who, uh, like myself, when I was in an uncomplicated situation, I did a four week taper and, you know, it was disastrous. So obviously in that situation, again, uncomplicated, the five to 10% every two to four weeks probably would have saved me a lot of misery and pain. Um, but I didn't know any better. And, um, so again, there's merit to that. I'm not saying there isn't, but tapering is complicated. It's very highly personal and, you know, we need to be talking more about these things and the doctors who are coming out and speaking up about this need to be even more vocal about it. And we need to get more benzo wise doctors, obviously, antidepressant, antipsychotic and all of these other drugs that are causing issues for people. We just obviously need more education. We need more, you know, people to talk about it. We need more evidence. You know, it's, it's just it's very frustrating. And I just had to, I guess, vent about that and talk about what I see and my own personal opinions about it. So 
Um, let me know in the comments your, your situation, um, what your journey is like, has been like, your tapering. Um, yeah, and let me know what you think about what I've said. So I hope everyone's doing okay. And if you're in the US, uh, that you had a good Thanksgiving weekend. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.